In this study we will compare two different microkeratome system at the same time. And we will share the surgical performance and biomechanical results with you. On the left is MedLogic's ML7 model, and on the right is Moria's M2 model. MedLogic's ML7 system vacuum elevated up to 550 millimeters of mercury in one second and Moria M2 system vacuum elevated up to 760 millimeters of mercury vacuum pressure. As you see on the video the ML7 can create the flap as quick as 7 seconds from the time the vacuum ring is placed in the cornea and removed, therefore ML7 video intentionally paused. On the right side, Moria M2 system still on progress to reach desirable vacuum pressure. We will continue to watch ML7 video until the surgeon removes Moria M2 ring. The patient eye is still under vacuum for 25 seconds. And surgeon is still trying to mount the M2 motor onto eye ring. The patient eye is still under vacuum and now the surgeon could able to move forward after 45 seconds. It is a one of the successful forward and back turn procedure. Surgeon could able to complete the flap up to 55 seconds. And now, vacuum off and eye ring is released gently. If you look at the left side ML7 video there is no sign of subconjunctival groove outcome. Also there is no gap between cornea and flap edges. On the right side video M2 vacuum ring is created a deep round groove on the eye due to the elevated vacuum along 55 seconds. Now we can start playing the rest of the ML7 video. And let the surgeon finish the laser surgery procedure for both microkeratomes same time. ML7 cut temporal hinge and Moria M2 cut superior hinge. Surgeon could able to lift off both flaps smoothly and easily. Both eyes stromal bed are looking good and dry for laser shooting procedure. After the laser shooting procedure, surgeon is washing the eyes and cornea flap and it needs to put back in place gently. Surgeon did a great job without any complication. Now let's take a closer look at what really happened. If look at the ML7 final video capture, you can easily see exact flap matching. And final shape of the cornea is very symmetrical and spheric. There is no significant gap between cornea and flap. Now let's take a closer look at the biomechanical principles of the ML7 that allow us to do this successful surgery. ML7 can create temporal, nasal and superior flap easily. Constant linear speed creates a symmetrical planar flap and symmetrical spheric stromal bed for predictable ablation. Temporal hints flap creation leaves a larger stromal surface available for ablation, which produces better treatments with less chances of developing glare and halos. With the temporal hinge, the surgeon can also create a larger hinge without sacrificing exposed stromal surface area, and also adding stability to the flap. In addition, the long ciliary plexus nerves are not affected at temporal side, which lowers the chances of developing dry eye symptoms. Now let's examine the Moria M2 flap creation. As you see on the Moria M2 video capture, M2 vacuum ring creates a deep round groove on the eye due to the elevated, 760 mm of mercury, vacuum along 55 seconds may cause moderate subconjunctival hemorrhage outcome. Another finding about the M2 ring is that there is only one vacuum spot under the M2 ring. During the vacuum procedure, the elevated vacuum may pull the subconjunctiva to the vacuum spot. This may cause oval flap outcome after the flap is cut. In this Moria M2 final surgery video capture you can easily see the gap between cornea and flap border. This may cause more irritation and burn sensation after surgery. Also may increase epithelial ingrowth risk. Also uneven flap dimension may create asymmetrical astigmatism post-op outcome at the center of the cornea. Now let's examine Moria M2 biomechanics arc principles. Blade head pushes cornea through nonlinear direction. Increase risk of asymmetrical astigmatism at the center of the cornea. If you examine Moria M2 plastic blade head M2 SU90 head, you can easily see how the blade tilts up and down. Therefore Moria M2 M2 SU90 blade cutting flap thickness tolerance is approximately plus and minus 25 microns. Also plastic head blades easily slides left and right direction. 
This may cause whale tail or irregular cutting edge risk during surgery. In light of these important findings, also blade tilt and plus and minus 25 micron tolerance may increase risk of buttonhole complication during surgery. Addition to that differing speeds in the arc principle create uneven flap thickness. May cause asymmetrical spheric stromal bed and unpredictable ablation. If you want to continue using your Moria M2 microkeratome more safely, we recommend use M2 with the ML7050 metalhead. This way, you can minimize your buttonhole risk and you can create your corneal flaps with a tolerance of plus or minus 5 microns. With calibrated blades, you can create flaps thickness from 70 micron to 150 micron. Now you can watch ML7050 metalhead with calibrated blade flap creation surgery video. You can see cornea and flap border cutting difference. As you see on the video, cornea border is looking very natural and smooth. And now stromal bed is ready for laser shooting. After laser shooting, surgeon is closing and placing the flap exactly the where it was. Cornea and flap borders are looking very smooth. Now let's compare and share our findings about both ML7 system and Moria M2 microkeratome with you. We would like to say that our eye surgeons found the ML7 system much more friendly than the Moria M2 microkeratome. Also we can say somehow friendly for Moria M2. Also, when we asked our eye surgeons which system was more predictable as an operational and post-op outcome, we got the answer that ML7 is much more predictable than Moria M2. When we asked our eye surgeons for their opinions about flap thickness and stromal bed consistency, we got the answer that the flap thickness and stromal bed surface outcome of the ML7 system is much more constant than the Moria M2. Buttonhole and free flap complications are among the complications that eye surgeons never want to encounter. Our eye surgeon stated that they have never experienced free flap or buttonhole complications with the ML7 system, but also our eye surgeon stated that they rarely experience these complications with the Moria M2. Finally, we asked our eye surgeons about the effects of two different systems on the patient during laser surgery and first day post-op period. The answer given by our eye surgeons was very clear. Since the ML7 was able to create flaps in about 7 seconds by applying low vacuum during the operation, the patients were not irritated because they did not feel anything during the surgery. Since corneal edema was also minimal in surgeries performed with the ML7 system, patients were able to achieve a good vision very quickly, spending the first 5 hours post-op period after surgery very little sensation, sometimes even without irritation. Therefore, we can say that the ML7 system is more friendly for the patient than the Moria M2. We can say that our happy patient rate has reached almost 100% after we started to use the Medlogix ML7 system in our eye clinics. The most important conclusion we have drawn from this study is that even if you have the best eczemer laser technology in the world, the result of laser surgery cannot be satisfactory if you do not use a best microkeratome system. We hope you found this study useful. And thank you for watching our study.